Let's talk about the number one mistake I keep seeing guys make in the DCS AH-64. Lead is a rolling in, engaging south and north, left in, right out. Alright guys, welcome aboard the H64D, and today we're going to talk about hovering and why it's probably not a great idea all the time to be doing it. I see a lot of guys on streams and uh, on videos, and they've always got this high hover, and then they seem a little bit surprised that they get engaged and destroyed. So we're going to talk about uh, when you should hover and when you shouldn't. And there's a couple things that we just need to think about. One is tactics and two is our uh, endurance and really just a technical uh, consideration. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the HDU so we can see what we're doing here. All right, first I'm going to take us to the uh, fuel page. So we can go to uh, main, hit fuel, and here we can see all the stuff related to our fuel. We can start fuel checks, all that good stuff. Uh, but you can see our fuel, calculated fuel flow is right here. So we're sitting on the ground, we're at flat pitch, we're burning 700 pounds an hour. Once we increase that, we'll take a look at a cruise and then at a hover and uh, see how that compares. You can also look over here on your TSD and you can see this EN. So that's endurance and that's uh, based on this fuel flow. We've got four hours and 26 minutes. You can see that's also over here endurance total. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick the aircraft up and we'll get to a low hover, a high hover, and uh, then we'll move forward. And we're going to see how that changes our fuel flow and our endurance. All right, so we're at a low hover in ground effect and we're pulling uh, about 74 percent torque we can see we're up to 1200 pounds per hour let's go ahead and climb up about 100 feet and again we can use that hover bob up box to help us uh, maintain our position if we're worried about it just keep that little circle inside that big box octagon whatever you want to call it and that'll keep you in that position all right, so we're at 100 feet now, 110, and we're pulling 90% torque or so, and we're looks like we're burning 1,400 pounds an hour. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and nose the aircraft forward. We're going to get into forward flight and see what kind of torque we can pull. All right, so we're cruising along now at about 100 knots. It's like 69%, 68% on the torque, and let's look back down at our fuel our fuel flow there and that's about what we were pulling at a hover so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throttle back just a little bit I'm gonna try to get us down to about 60 or 70 knots and let's see what kind of torque and fuel we're pulling there alright so we're pulling about uh, 45 between 45 and 50 percent torque we've got about 70 knots you can see that we're not uh, descending I could even put in a little bit of a climb but we're maintaining our altitude and we're just kind of cruising along. Let's take a look at our fuel now. It's at 1,000. All right. So you can see that your torque settings are going to have a, a huge impact on your endurance uh, and the amount of time that you got on station. Uh, you really want the limiting factor to be the ammo, not the fuel. So you can see that as a uh, aircraft at a high hover in a battle position, you're going to have a very difficult time uh, remaining on station you're just burning a lot of uh, a lot of fuel and using up a lot of power and you're not leaving yourselves a lot of margins uh, if you do uh, get engaged uh, you're, you're slow you're exposed uh, so what we'll do now is we're gonna go ahead and set up into a position uh, at a low hover this is what I kind of suggest in a high threat environment and then we'll head up into a high hover and kind of demonstrate why it's not a good idea all right so we're gonna go ahead and set up into a high hover here uh, vicinity of these trees uh, I've got this smoke coming out of this uh, thing over here. It can let us know kind of what the winds are doing. So I'm just start bringing that power out. And getting us set up for a hover. And we're going to set up behind these trees. And I'm going to show you another mistake that I see guys do all the time. Uh, hovering tactically. And we're going to get right up on these trees. Get a nice concealed position. Alright, so we're tucked in nice and close to these trees. Uh, nobody can see us. We're hiding. We're doing all this great, great scouting stuff, attack pilot stuff, getting in close. And of course, what we're going to do is pull up on the collective gently. We're going to watch that torque. We don't want to pull the guts out of the aircraft. Uh, we're trying to maintain our position close to the trees. And we'll start gently pulling up that torque, pulling up on that collective so we can uh, unmask the aircraft, let our front seater find and engage targets. 
So I'm kind of right on that edge. And of course, we can go over 100%, but you know, try to try to stay within the realm of what the aircraft wants you to be able to do. All right, so we're coming up. We're, ex we're exposing the aircraft. Here's the problem. When you're tucked in by these trees, you really don't have any options. So if we were to take fire or if we lose an engine or something like that, we start going forward and down to react to that. We've got trees right in front of us. So we've eliminated a lot of space that we have available to do something. So instead, I'm going to transition over to this side. What I highly recommend is as you get behind the trees, you get behind a hill, the buildings, whatever, but you give yourself some space. So here we are behind these trees. Uh, they're still giving us the same amount of cover and concealment. We'll just unmask. And while we're coming up, the backseater, he's looking for his options. He's seeing what's available uh, in case they do take fire, in case you do lose an engine, uh, that you've got some options. Uh, do you have enough space to bring it straight down to the ground? Uh, right now, we've got space to our left and right. We do have some space in front of us. So if suddenly we start taking fire, I've got to unmask or correction mask the aircraft. Uh, I know I can come forward and down, and I've got plenty of space. I can maneuver. And if I lose an engine, I've got plenty of space to recover and uh, put the aircraft down or try to get flyaway speed with a single engine. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to head to waypoint four, which has some vehicles. And uh, I know I made a mistake and accidentally left the default altitude in when I dropped waypoint four. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up direct waypoint four and we're up transition mode. And there it is way up in the sky. Obviously, there's probably not a whole lot of tanks there, so we can uh, make an adjustment. So we're going to go to point. We've already got it selected. We're going to hit edit. We're going to select up here where it says free. And that's going to bring up our keyboard unit. So we can change the name of it. Free text. We're going to hit enter. The grid is going to uh, pop up. We can change that. We're going to hit enter. And our altitude. We're going to hit clear. Enter. And now waypoint four is down on the ground. All right. So now we'll head on over to waypoint four. We're going to try to get to a high hover so we can engage these uh, tanks. And uh, we'll see how that works out for us tactically. Okay, while we're in our climb, uh, let's just pay attention to our radar altimeter setting. So we're in a transition mode. We've got our altimeter uh, readout right there on the right side. We're passing 1,000 feet. And you'll notice that this is AGL. This is from our radar altimeter. We do not have an MSL. Uh, but we can go ahead and up to transition mode, and we can see both of them now. We can see the MSL up at the top, 1370. But pay attention to the radar altimeter. We're passing 1330, and we're just going to continue this climb. And there it goes. All right, so I know I've seen some people ask why that disappears. It's because the radar altimeter can only go so far. So if you're really curious about your altitude, you can uh, flip up to uh, cruise mode and see your MSL. But I would also argue, again, if you're in a high threat environment and you can't read your radar altimeter, it's probably a good sign that you're probably too high. All right, so we're at 2,500 feet. We're approaching uh, waypoint four. We've got these tanks in the open. I'm gonna start slowing us down and get us into a couple kilometers of that target area and just bring us to a hover allow my handsome front seater to start looking for targets and i'm just easing back on the collective easing back on the cyclic trying to keep that vertical speed indicator uh, pretty much centered and still working back that speed Tran transferring my speed turning it into altitude and just modulating the collective all right, so here we are at our high tactical hover so the gunner can see the target area. Oh, and somebody's shooting at us. And we're just sitting here and there's really nothing we can do except hope that they don't hit us. So I don't really want to get hit today, so I'm going to uh, try and evade this. Oh, oh, no, see, it didn't work. So sitting at a high hover, you can see, is uh, not a great look. And it's probably not going to end the way you want it to. Instead, what you could do is set up uh, basically racetracks, kind of orbits. Uh, if you are going to operate at high altitude, if the threat allows it. Uh, I recently demonstrated this in a uh, stream with my buddy Tricker. And basically, uh, we were engaging some insurgents in a building. And I just picked up a, a high orbit, line up on the target, allow him to do what he needs to do with the site, lays the target, store it, all that good stuff. Turn outbound, continue back in on another run, shoot the missile, shoot the gun, uh, whatever you need to do. But uh, the bottom line is hovering is really not for everyone and it's not for every situation. So if you find yourself getting shot down a lot, 
you need to start asking yourself uh, what tactics are yeah. you using one right for the middle of the house Rock is fleeing the compound. Look, all right, cease fire. Look for the truck. There he is. Got it. Oh, oh shit! I already, got it. I already got it. I anticipated the truck leaving. All right, there's more of them. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll talk to you later. Take it easy.